Hello and welcome back fellow path integrators. Today once again with an integral and this time I would like to show you a kind of cool trick how to solve this integral. So for a start I would say we use integration by parts so we would write the integral as the product of the two functions 1 over sine squared of x dx. So what we can do now is we can remember the rule, the formula for integrating by parts, which was like the integral over u times the derivative of v dx is equal to u times v minus the integral over the derivative of u times v itself dx. So in case of the upper integral, I would say that Let's stay with the color. The x is u and the fraction 1 over sine squared of x is equal to v squared. So if we write that down, we will get like x times the integral of 1 over sine squared of x dx minus the integral of the derivative of u is simply 1. So we are stay uh, we are staying with the integral over 1 over 1 uh, over 1 over sine squared of x man so first we have the integral that we have to solve sine squared of x dx and the whole thing then dx so as we can see what we need to solve right now is we need to find out what the solution to this integral is and here we can apply the cool trick that i was talking about which is using the quotient rule for taking derivatives backwards so if we take a look at that um, function so we have the integral one over sine squared of x dx and this should equal some function some function that we shall call f of x right now. Let's say this function is a fraction which has like a function in the in the counter and a function in the denominator. Okay, let's take the derivative of x uh, of f of x because the derivative of f of x should equal the function that is inside of the integral. So the derivative of f of x should equal 1 over sine squared of x. So since we're saying that f of x is written as this quotient here, we have to apply the quotient rule to take the derivative of f of x. So what we will get is d of dx of z over h. I'll abbreviate the whole thing and leave the arguments of the functions out. is equal to z prime times h minus set h prime divided by h squared. So this means if we compare this here with this, then we will see that sine squared of x is equal to h squared of x, which obviously means that sine of x is equal to h of x. So we already know what th the denominator of our function is that we're looking for. So now take a, let's take a look at the counter. So the counter says set prime times h, h is sine of x, and then minus set times h prime, so the derivative of h of x, which means cosine of x. So here we have cosine of x, and this should equal and now take a look at the function here. This should equal 1 because we have a 1 in the counter. So this reminds us a lot um, of the theorem that we know for cosine and sine, which is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So in order to make this happen for the equation above here, we have to say that z of x is equal to minus cosine of x because then the derivative would be the sine of x and this means that the whole equation here would become sine squared of x plus because the minus and the minus 
make the plus cosine squared of x and this equals one. So now we have a solution for our integral. So the solution for our integral is one over sine squared of x dx is equal to minus cosine of x divided by sine of x. So now we can plug that in into our integral. What we're doing right now is the full integral was x times 1 divided by 1 sine squared x dx. Then we used integrating by parts, which gave us x times this. So we have like minus x times cosine of x divided by sine of x and then minus the integral over this whole thing here. So this gives us a plus here and we have like cosine of x divided by sine of x dx. So the only thing left is we need to solve this integral here. And this is rather simple because when we take a look at the counter of this function, the counter of the function is the derivative of the denominator of the function, which means that this integral has the form f prime of x divided by f of x dx. So what we can do is we can use logarithmic integration and we will get the log of f of x plus a constant, but let's forget about the constant now. So what we end up with is the whole solution to the integral then is minus x times cosine of x divided by sine of x plus the natural log of f of x. Ah, not sorry, not f of x. Now I was writing from that equation here. No, ln of sine of x, of course. All right, so I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked the way we solved the integral. Let me know in the comments what type of integral you want to see next. And uh, it would be cool if you leave a like and maybe also subscribe to my channel. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye.